Hey, this is Jim. It's 11.14 a.m. in San Francisco, California on June the 22nd. Please note that all discussions, analysis, and information presented are for general informational and educational purposes only and should not be construed as financial or any other form of professional advice. So sometimes in life you have to troll the trolls. So that's what I've done for the past two days. We started by, uh, started by um, uh, sending out a tweet uh, yesterday uh, saying that I'd be talking to Charles Payne later in the day. I did that so that we could get some exposure through Big Gums and his group of mostly bogus or uninformed uh, people. A lot of them, I believe, are short hedge fund trolls, and I'll show that to you guys in a minute, my proof of that. Um, but what we decided to do is since the uh, Twitter account is so heavily shadow banned still, and especially when I talk about things that are sort of sensitive to uh, people in power, um, I wanted to do it this way. You get, if you guys know me, you know what I want to do is go back behind the scenes, um, back to the life I had before all of this as quickly as possible. But in the meantime, I want to expose uh, corruption uh, wherever it is, in the government, on Wall Street, wherever. I want Charles Payne to help us stop this crony capitalism um, and to stop the, the, the descent toward banana republic um, of becoming a banana republic that we're, we're, we're on right now, a descent in a nosedive. So hopefully he'll help us out. And this was the best way to do that. I trolled them again today. Um, but again, if you read these uh, very carefully and you don't have any preconceived notions, you'll see that it says in about three hours, I'll be explaining to Charles Payne. Well, three hours passed, it's, it's, and I'm now explaining these things to Charles Payne. So I never used the word TV. I never said I was going on his show, but what I did was basically troll the troll. So mission accomplished. Here's what I wanted to point out. I want to point out uh, that, uh, number one, there's been a clear violation of this Rule 612. You guys can look it up, and it's as blatant and plain as day as, as, uh, as can be. If you look at the quadruple aught trading increments in the stock, which is not a sub uh, $1 stock, uh, clear violation for everyone to see, um, and we'll see if the authorities do anything about it. Adam Aaron hasn't mentioned anything about it. What he does uh, tend to mention frequently is this magic number three, the same number that uh, Charlie Gasparino has mentioned, the same number that uh, a, uh, a uh, Twitter personality that's uh, set up multiple spaces calls uh, has talked about. And he's a person who uh, obviously uh, owns the AMC debt. All of those people know that they're going to get a, a good income, they can uh, outcome rather, they can either get a and uh, income, they can either get a good outcome or a great outcome based on um, this dilution. So from the very beginning, you guys know that I was a no vote. I was a no vote because one for 10 reverse split is draconian as hell. There was no reason for it. We told Adam Aaron multiple times that we were willing to step up, we meaning retail, step up and um, purchase items uh, with the agreement and the understanding that the uh, profit from those items would go directly toward paying down debt. We told him that the best, fastest way to, to, to get there would be through the uh, commemorative silverback silver coins. We were willing to buy those for 100 to $500 each, depending on how uh, rare they were, um, the, the number of them that were going to be distributed. And we could have easily surpassed the two $300 million that was raised through Antera. And Tara obviously is not a friend of ours. And if we start to look at um, this smoking gun, which I talked about yesterday, trying to bring it to Charles' attention, this internal email uh, over at Antara, it's the analyst talking directly to the big boss. And then this is what we want to focus on, this 2L, um, because that that is where this $2.25 billion um, uh, number comes from. Um, what I've done in the meantime is I sent out a uh, email to Mr. Merriweather uh, yesterday, and um, you can read this tweet that I just sent out. I'm asking him for details about uh, the entity or entities that that 
uh, are hiding behind this 2L. Um, we want to know more about that. Um, the reason we want to know more about that is because uh, any talk about an imminent risk of bankruptcy was completely disingenuous, whether it was being talked about by um, uh, the short hedge fund trolls, which is uh, basically breaking the law. Obviously, it's a short and distort campaign, or if it was being talked about by the management team um, as a way to strong arm retail investors into saying yes to the draconian one for 10 reverse split um, or saying yes to basically anything and everything that that daddy uh, says that we need to agree to. So it's sort of a pat on the head. You, you all are too dumb to understand this. So just let the big boys uh, drive the ship and um, and uh, everything will be lovely. So obviously, uh, if Antera's internal uh, analyst is telling the big boss uh, that there is uh, a way forward to avoid any imminent risk of bankruptcy. Um, that is uh, what I'm describing as a smoking gun. A hundred percent it is. Uh, again, uh, today I sent out uh, this tweet in about three hours. I'll be explaining to Charles Payne. That's what we're doing right now. I also um, pointed out again, this rule 612. And so basically I'm saying, uh, Wall Street money managers currently breaking Rule 612, while some corrupt hedge funds and crypto exchanges traffic in fake short locates, naked shorts, or counterfeit shares. All of that has come to light. The fact that uh, the Miami exchange absorbed FTX's, um, uh, FTX's crypto exchange, in my opinion, was a way to uh, disappear the skeletons um, and the uh, uh counterfeit shares that were created through um, through the crypto exchanges. We also wanted to ask Charles Gasparino why he's been bashing AMC relentlessly. I personally have never seen this in 30 years of following things on Wall Street. Um, a, a professional financial market journalist sing, signaling, singling out a, a one stock and relentlessly trashing it. Um, so he's been bashing AMC, and uh, I want to ask him why he thinks that our CEO AA refuses to publicly confront Gasparino uh, in order to defend our company. I personally would want to do that and would want to go on the show instead of being passive while someone uh, tramples on your uh, foot soldiers in the field. After all, CG has accused uh, CEO Adam and his sons of cashing out a huge payday on the backs of the AMC apes. True, he said it many times. I sure as hell would want to defend myself if I were AA. True, I wish he would. Uh, and I'm hoping uh, Charles will uh, uh, orchestrate that, call all of them out, maybe the three of them in a room. Wouldn't that be a great interview? It's Charles with Chuck and um, AA in the same room. I'd like to see that. Uh, note here, retail has been bloodied in the trenches. Some even forced to sell into the hole in order to pay bills. I have the personal direct knowledge of this. I've talked about it in all the spaces calls, the brutality that I learn about every day when I click on this message tab because my DMs are wide open and I have to hear these stories from families. A lot of them veterans that have served multiple tours overseas and, and been shit on when they came back, uh, not had their backs covered, not had their bills covered, not have had good medical care, while people pile across the border and get free everything and the best of care in every facility. You know, obviously uh, n not, a, uh, n not something that uh, makes me proud or should make any of us proud. Um, but again, some of those same people that have uh, put their lives on the line and served our country uh, came back, got shit on again by having their uh, startup businesses shut down during the, uh, uh, the bogus uh, uh, authoritarian shutdown. So that's what I was covering there. Um, here I'm calling these guys out again, trolling the trolls. And I'm saying since CEO Adam and C. Gasparino love the number three so much, um, I decided to kill three birds with one stone today. That's what I'm doing right now, calling out, you know, three buck Chuck, calling out Adam and calling out the rule 612, um, calling out the crypto exchanges, killing, killing more than three birds with one stone. So um, this is another thing that shows uh, the exact Twitter accounts of the short hedge fund trolls. Um, if you if you think in terms of an announcement for a spaces call, it's uh, 
really typical. I'll start with this one. It's really more typical. And, and this is a, you know, obviously a very popular account and the person who does huge space calls with massive following. This is pretty normal here. So he has 792 people have viewed this, um, has uh, quite a few retweets um, and likes because people want to go and attend this spaces call and learn more about this topic. And then very few comments because there's not a lot to comment on, you know, the commenting um, happens on the call or after the call when you learn what the person wants to talk about for uh, me to have put up a space call yesterday, basically shadow ban level uh, exposure, very few likes and retweets because again, people aren't seeing it, but then this massive number of comments. And if you click down on those comments, you can see that they are all nameless, faceless accounts. They are, in my opinion, short hedge fund social media trolls that are paid uh, to come in and trash uh, anyone who's pro AMC, pro retail, and especially, uh, you know, someone like me who has a specific model and decades of experience and can uh, use my network of people, including Pedro, to specifically call out exact timestamps of uh, fake trading and manipulative trading intraday. So, um, if you drill down and you look at uh, those comments, what you'll see is that they are uh, nothing's constructive. There aren't questions. It's all trash, bam, trash, uh, Ethan and uh, optimal um, and daily uh, trash. Anyone who sticks up for retail and uh, is not happy with a draconian one for 10 reverse split bludgeoning. Uh, at the hands of uh, management, even though management has cashed out huge amounts of, of money themselves and, and the family members. And then again, management has refused to uh, ex literally accept support and money from the retail uh, audience when we've offered to, to uh, do any number of things, but really the best uh, collective idea based on uh, votes and polls and spaces calls was the silverback silver coin idea that Pedro came up with. Uh, again, easily we could have dwarfed that two to $300 million number and Adam could have used that to pay down uh, debt or, or use his leverage to restructure debt. I think we could have uh, approach the $1 billion mark based on uh, the huge number of shareholders that we have and the fact that we would much rather defend our stock price uh, than let um, uh, CEO Adam sell shares of APE into directly into institutional hands um, and therefore weaponizing uh, the Willy Wonka golden ticket APE share and handing it off to one of the bad guys to, to, to cover the short position on a uh, uh, a formerly counterfeit uh, uh, short position. Um, lastly here, uh, again, this uh, email that I sent to uh, Mr. Merriweather yesterday, you guys can you know take a look at that and, and read what I'm specifically asking for, dear Mr. Merriweather. Please share a reference document or a link to a document or balance sheet or share the specific name or names of entity or entities that are described as 2L. In the last sentence of this internal email exchange between these two gentlemen, you know, the analyst and the big boss over at Antera, I attached um, that exact uh, internal email exchange, which is this document right here. I attached that uh, to that email that I sent to Mr. Merriweather. So, uh, again, I will let you guys know uh, when I hear back from uh, Mr. Merriweather on that. In the meantime, uh, in, in last night's Spaces call, I told you guys that once again, reiterating that I am bullish uh, AMC and APE um, and that I can see the algorithms that these guys are running to pin the stock and to manipulate the stock. And I'm just, uh, speaking specifically about the ticker AMC now. Um, I told you in the call yesterday that the, the most aggressive algorithm that's running right now has been running for uh, it was created on the late session on June the 8th um, and late session or early session, the 12th of uh, June. That's a pinning algorithm that have, has this price sitting where it is right now today. That runs its course in the last half hour trading on June the 29th, precisely. 
Uh, at that point, the stock can start to move more in a vertical uptrend. I think it'll already be in an uptrend um, starting tomorrow um, off of a low either today or a one more stop running low uh, that could take us back down uh, through that 385 level and then form a V bottom and head straight up into uh, 1135-ish tomorrow on the 23rd. We've got a zone of strength on the 26th possibly jumping that wet blanket algorithm but even worst case scenario if it can't uh, jump that uh, wet blanket algorithm that suppresses and manipulates price in a sideways range then we can still take off to the upside the last half hour on the 29th and we have a, a wide open window rally window from uh, june the 29th into july the 11th that's it from my side good luck to everybody keep calling out all these bogus bastards uh, keep calling out the crony capitalism, hopefully Charles Payne. I have zero interest in uh, going on anyone's show publicly. I want to go back into the background, but I also want to um, nudge these guys and I want to help give them the ammunition they need to have some uh, conversations about uh, who the bad actors are and how to clean up the problem. Uh, thanks again to everybody and good luck.